play can win a football game. One game can make a season. And one player, any player, may make or break a play, a game, a season. There are approximately 150 plays in a football game, and there are only three or four plays in any game which make the difference between winning and losing. No one knows when the big play is coming up. Therefore, every player must go all out on every play. In other words, every player has a responsibility on every play. And that responsibility begins with the proper use of his given talent. The development of all talent is founded on fundamentals. And in football, the first of the fundamentals is the basic football position. Football has a basic position. Feet spread, knees flexed, a slightly sitting position with the weight evenly distributed. It is from this position that all football movements must stem. The basic football position. All players, whether on the offense or the defense, assume this position or move through it. For it is the basic position from which everything stems, including the basic offensive stance. The offensive football stance from which all offensive movement stems is with the feet spread just slightly outside the width of the shoulders with the right foot staggered and the right handed stance with the toe of the right foot to the heel of the left foot with the right hand down with the weight evenly distributed on the tripod of the fingers and the two feet with the right arm just inside the knee of the right leg the buttocks slightly higher than the shoulders and the shoulders square sometimes it is a little bit difficult to get the shoulders square a good teaching point is to drop the left arm in the same position as the right arm until both until the shoulders are exactly square and then to lift the left arm and keep it just about even with the knee which will keep the shoulders square again both heels are off the ground slightly with the right heel slightly more higher than the left heel and this from this position at the football player uncoils this is the offensive stance feet and shoulders properly positioned head up neck firm but not straining and tail slightly higher than the shoulders and offensive football begins with the center the center stance is the offensive stance with the feet spread at shoulder width the toes of the right foot opposite the arch of the left foot. As the center takes his position over the ball, which is before him with the laces up, his head is slightly behind the ball because a center can be offside too. The center places his right hand on the ball with only the thumb touching the front end of the laces. The other fingers of his right hand are under the ball. He places his left hand on top of the back end of the ball and it merely rests there. The snap is executed with only the right hand and arm, but placing the left hand on the ball will ensure better balance. The snap or delivery of the ball is made with a simple and natural pendulum swing that never changes. The arm is straight and comes back hard and fast, following the same path every time. As the locked arm passes the right knee, the center will find that this pendulum swing produces a natural quarter turn of the ball and presents it with the laces in perfect position for the quarterback's grip. When the snap is correctly executed, the ball always arrives in the quarterback's hands with the laces under the second joints of the fingers of his passing hand. He does not have to seek the laces. This is particularly important when the play is a quick pass. All a quarterback has to do is raise the ball and throw. Remember, in the snap, the essentials are uniformity, firmness, and speed. The center must not lift his tail with the snap. If he does, he will force the quarterback's hands up, losing the target. The perfect snap is always identified by that pop as the ball strikes the quarterback's hands. Here in a game, notice how that snap by the center 
and the drive of the offensive line are one and the same, beating the defense to the charge. practice field of course is where you perfect the timing of that snap and charge where the team learns to come off that ball on the snap as one man this is the cadence drill there are two types of cadences that are used in football really the rhythmic and the non-rhythmic for example in the rhythmic cadence hut 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 where there's a set length of time between each hut in the non-rhythmic cadence there is no set length of time. And an example of a non-rhythmic cadence would be on three, for example, hut, 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 or hut, 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 or hut, 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 any type of non-rhythmic. We prefer the non-rhythmic cadence. And the reason we do, it prevents anticipation by our offensive line of a snap count. In other words, it allows them to get off as a unit rather than like a typewriter. And it also prevents anticipation by the defensive line and anticipating our count. The quarterback can snap that ball at any time. He can hold it. He can hold it until the defense is on the verge of making a mistake probably. For example, on three, hut, hut. And he can sit there and watch that whole defensive line. And at the opportune time, he can give that third hut, which would snap the ball. Hut! We have been discussing the center, in particular his responsibilities in the center quarterback exchange. In addition to these responsibilities, he must be able to make all of the offensive blocks. In the latest segment of this series, we will cover the drive block and pass blocking. But now, let's look at two blocks that the center makes more often than any other player. The cutoff block and the down block. Cutoff block is used to prevent pursuit. One example, the center must get the middle linebacker starting in the direction of the play. The blocker pushing off the rear foot and driving over the front foot makes his first step in the direction of the man he is assigned to block. On contact with the man, he throws his arm, shoulders, and head beyond the far leg of the opponent. He then goes to all fours and keeps moving in a crab-like motion. If he is going to release his man, he must release him to the rear. Watch now as the center moves quickly to his man, throws his arm, shoulders, and head between the man and the runner, drops to all fours and keeps crabbing. The blocker then is lost to sight, but the back isn't. He just scored. The down block, or the block back, is used by the center when he must block a defender who is offset to either side of him or when that defender is attempting to penetrate as in a gap or goal line defense. The blocker's first step is with his near foot. It is a short step, and he aims his head at the crotch of the opponent, anticipating that the defensive man will move on the snap of the ball. If the blocker does not get his head in front and aims at the hips, he will lose his man because that man may beat him across the line of scrimmage. He must aim at the crotch. He makes his contact with the far shoulder and keeps his head in front of the man. If the defensive man does not penetrate, the blocker moves into a reverse body block to prevent the defensive man from spinning out. Here is an example of a good down block. Notice the center, he aims his head at the crotch, makes his contact with his far shoulder, and as the opponent tries to spin off, he keeps his head in front of that man. Now watch the center as the middle linebacker tries to move into the hole. The center picks him up and takes his man in the direction he wants to go, while the back cuts and is gone. We have now seen how the center performs his duties on the snap to the quarterback and on two of the blocks that he must execute. He must also, however, perfect the long pass back for punts. The ball must travel 14 yards and arrive at belt high level and on a line with the kicking leg. For the long snap, the center's feet are no longer staggered, but are on a line. 
parallel to each other and wide enough apart for both of his elbows to pass freely through his legs as he makes the snap. The ball should be positioned with the laces close to the ground on the right. With his right hand, the center grips the ball on the laces as a passer would. His left hand at the back of the ball is his guiding hand. As he becomes more experienced, he will be able to move that left hand further forward to add more power and speed. But until he is experienced, the center must sacrifice some of that for accuracy. As the ball is centered, it is spun so that it reaches the kicker as a spiral, arriving at that belt high level on line with the kicking leg. To sum up, the feet are on a line and parallel. The center grips the ball as a passer would, guides it with his left hand, and aims for that target. For a punt, no snap can be too fast. But for points after touchdown and field goals, the center cuts back the speed of the snap somewhat. On the snap for extra points and field goals, the center stance and hand position are the same as they are for a punt. The distance of this snap is now seven yards, and his target is the jersey numbers of the holder, who is down on one knee, arms and hands extended at the ready. If the center aims at the kicking alley and misses, there may be no chance for recovery. But aiming at the numbers gives the holder that chance if the snap is off the mark. Split second timing. It begins with the center and continues with the quarterback. And once again, it is founded on fundamentals and starts with the stance. The quarterback stance should be as comfortable as possible with the feet spread approximately the width of the shoulders, with the toes pointed straight ahead, the weight on the balls of the feet, and at the same time, the heels still flat to the ground, touching the ground. The knees should be flexed slightly, the back straight, with the arms extended. His position should be such, and the weight should be such, that he can go in any direction with ease. Right, left, or backwards, either the drop for a pass or for a hand off to the rear. The quarterback's hands should be placed thumb to thumb, with the right thumb slightly extended beyond the point of the left thumb. With the hand upward and spread, and with the left hand outward, with the wrist slightly cocked to the right, the right wrist slightly cocked to the right, and there should be pressure on the center's tail so he can feel the position of that hand for his snap. And on the snap, the quarterback rides the center forward. Here we see the position of the quarterback's hands ready to receive the snap. The hands placed thumb line to thumb line, the right thumb slightly extended beyond the end of the left thumb. The hands relaxed with the fingers spread, and the right hand on top, applying pressure under the tail of the center to give him a target. The position of the quarterback's hands as he takes his stance behind the center is a thumb-to-thumb -thumb position with the tip of the right thumb slightly beyond the tip of the left thumb so that they fit perfectly together. The quarterback puts pressure of his right hand on the tail of the center, cocking his wrist, his right wrist, hard to the right. And the reason for that, if you remember, on a quarterback center exchange, or when the center snaps the ball, there's a quarter turn of the ball. And the quarter turn of the ball, the laces of the ball will fit or will fall approximately across the second joint of the hand. The fingers are spread hard. The hands are spread. And there's great pressure, hard pressure, of thumb to thumb. And the reason for that is, as the ball hits the top hand, there's a reflex action in which the underneath hand, in this case the left hand, as the ball hits the right hand, the top of the right hand,
the left hand will automatically come underneath the ball to cradle it. Try it sometime. I think it's important to remember that the first move of the quarterback as he receives the ball from the center is to bring the ball into his stomach where he has perfect control of it and hides it. Remember his original position, his elbows are close and he keeps it that way. We use a little bit different technique, I think, than most teams in the back receiving the ball from the quarterback, the position of the back I'm talking about. We like to have the stomach completely open. In other words, we take a natural running action, our back does. It's the quarterback's responsibility to place the ball in the belly of the back. So as all a back does is keep his eyes on the hole which, in which he is running to. Very important that he keeps his inside hand, his inside arm, back and behind his hip so that the whole stomach is exposed. There's nothing there to stop the ball. There's nothing there to hit the ball. There's nothing there to cause a fumble. The quarterback's responsibility is to place it into the stomach. The back, in assuming a natural running position, as he's going to get the ball, this is his position. Hand back, forearm of the outside hand parallel to the ground, stop hand right here, which prevents the ball from coming all the way across the body. At the same time, he's watching the hole like this, and as the ball comes in, he stops it, and as the ball seat is seated, his other hand or his inside hand comes underneath the ball, and he runs to daylight. Here you see the handoff of the dive play. The quarterback has stepped down the line of scrimmage. His eyes are focused on the belly of the back. The back has his near arm removed his other forearm parallel to the ground, the hand open, ready to stop the ball, his eyes are on the hole. As the quarterback plants the ball, he plants it so the back can feel it. The back's removed hand, acting as a backstop, has stopped it, and his near arm comes up and cradles the ball. Here we see the handoff executed for the dive play in a game. The quarterback steps down the line, his eyes on the back's belly. The back's eyes are on the hole or the area to which he is running. This is the handoff on a sweep. The techniques are still the same, except that the quarterback pivots instead of moving down the line. And here it is in slow motion. Note the quarterback's eyes right on the belly where he is going to place the ball. Note the back's eyes looking for daylight. And note that was six points. There is another important variation of the handoff, and that is the one that is employed in the draw play. Draws are effect effective in combating excessive pressure by the defense and rushing the passer, and as a change of pace. For the draw to be effective, however, everyone must simulate pass, including the running back who is going to receive the ball. That means that the back will not be moving toward the hole. He will be set as he does as a pass blocker, and a quarterback will come to him to make the handoff. For example, on a draw play to the fullback, everyone simulates pass, including the receivers. All the receivers go out. This receiver will go out. This back, who is going to run the draw play, will set in the same way as he does in protecting the quarterback when there actually is going to be a pass. The quarterback will come to him, and he will sit there to wait for the ball to be seated in his, in his stomach. Each one of these men, all the linemen, will simulate pass blocking. The fullback, who is the draw runner, if it's a draw right, will key the offensive right guard. If the offensive right guard takes his man to the right, he will run that draw play to the inside. If the offensive right guard takes his man to the left, he will run that draw play to the right side. This is a classic example for exa uh, of running a play to daylight. Again, the quarterback pivots. 
steps back to the running back who is simulating setting for a pass block. The quarterback seats the ball. The back takes off. And this shows you how effective a draw play can be. On slant plays, the quarterback uses a reverse pivot. Here are several examples of the handoff of the slant. And the rule is the same. The quarterback has complete responsibility for placing the ball. The back's eyes are on the hole. The slant, which will be discussed in detail later in this series, has long been a favorite of mine because it gets the back to the hole almost as quickly as does the dive play, yet it gives the back the opportunity to run to daylight, as he does here. Of course, not all running plays are designed for the quarterback to actually hand the ball to his running back. Sometimes, for example, if we want to get outside the defensive perimeter quickly, we use pitch outs. And there are two types of pitch outs, of course, which is the one-handed, the underhand, one-handed spiral pitch out, or the two-handed toss to either side. The two-handed lateral, which is a soft lateral, is usually made with the reverse pivot to the right and usually to the fullback who is going wide on a sweep action. You notice the ball was kept close to the stomach and hidden at all times and thrown from the belly. Going to the left, it's the same action except this time he reverses to the left. Watch how the ball stays close to the stomach and is hidden at all times. Again, it's the quarterback's responsibility to put that ball in the correct area. Here in game action is the reverse pivot and the two-handed lateral. The quarterback's eyes are on the target. The ball is thrown from the stomach. And once again, it is the quarterback's responsibility to get the ball to the back where and when that back wants it. Another type of lateral that is used, and this is usually to the halfback on a pitch out, and going to the right is usually done reverse with a reverse pivot and with a spiral action and again from the stomach. Here it is again. On the quarterback going to the left, since it would be awkward for a right-handed quarterback to pivot and still try to throw with his right hand, he usually steps out with his left foot and a straight pivot to make the lateral pitch. Here it is in slow motion. A successful play, however, is not just the result of the partnership of two or three men. It is the result of the coordination of all 11 men, each of whom has made himself master of all the fundamentals on which winning football is founded. Every man must be committed to excellence. Every man must be committed to victory.